you mentioned that fall and winter are, um, you mentioned the seasonality of, of asthma. And, you know, I think a lot of us know that fall and winter are particularly hard for a lot of asthmatics. Why is that? And are there any things in particular that parents can do to keep asthma flare-ups down during those seasons? Well, the fall season is notoriously uh, tough on asthmatics. Um, first of all, the kids go back to school and they start sharing all their germs. Um, certain allergies peak during the fall, mainly dust mites and ragweed pollen. Um, there's also dramatic fluctuations in environmental conditions during the fall. Um, it can be cold and hot and wet and dry all before noon. And, um, you know, the change in temperature, pressure, and humidity can really wreak havoc on pushy airways. Um, you know, it's the convergence of these factors that creates a, a kind of a perfect storm that often results in increased asthma exacerbation during the fall. And um, many asthmatics, if you're asthma, will tell you that fall is actually the worst time of year, more so than winter. Um, so it becomes even more important to visit your asthma specialist or to revisit whoever's taking care of your asthma to optimize the asthma care plan um, you know, before getting sick, prior to the onset of increased symptoms, before these conditions become an issue. What are the slip-ups that you see parents making that can land their child in the emergency room? Um, you know, again, it comes back, first and foremost, compliance and technique. And, you know, I've already mentioned these, but mm -hmm. often parents will stop control their medication uh, because they feel their child doing well. And um, but maybe doesn't need the medication anymore. What they, what they may not realize is that their child is doing well because they're on the medication, and stopping the medication prematurely may increase the child's risk of a flare-up. So I always ask parents to try to avoid unilaterally stopping these medications, at least to contact the provider, whoever's managing the asthma, and then we have a discussion about whether that's appropriate. Another um, very common problem is lack of supervision with medication. So a lot of these, uh, even young kids, school-age skilled kids, and, um, and particularly adolescents, nobody's really watching them take, take their medications. Um, and ideally, directly is their therapy works best. And uh, if left alone, then it can lose their not take medications or, or take them incorrectly, rush through the process, and then their technique is critical. And if they're really not focused on it, their technique will be poor. And um, you're, you're really not optimizing it. You know, but it's, it's also important, you know, I, I don't want to um, downplay the fact that sometimes flare-ups occur despite parents' best efforts and having done everything right. It's, it's not a sign of bad parenting, but as it can be challenging, it can be challenging both parents, the, the children affected, as well as the treating physician. And if your child's asthma seems to be acting up, you know, maybe time to reevaluate with your uh, specialist or with your general 